everyone. My name is Lysan Keen. Um, I'm the owner of Lysan Keen, uh, a gallery based in Boston. Uh, with me, I have Anna Bagais and Kira G Gregory. Um, they are part of uh, a three-person exhibition currently on view at my gallery, uh, 460C Harrison Avenue in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, the uh, title of the show is In Close Proximity. Um, so we are having an artist talk, so we would like this to be a very fun conversation with all of us, very you know, uh, intimate audience here. Uh, unfortunately, it's been raining today in Boston. Um, uh, probably people are kind of not, you know, able to come out. Therefore, we uh, have Facebook and Instagram uh, streaming live right now. So hopefully everyone tune in to listen to these two young, uh, talented emerging artists, um, both based in uh, New York, uh, Queens, New York. Uh, just a little introduction. So Annabelle guys, uh, originally from Baltimore, graduated from Princeton in 2019 uh, with an art history degree and uh, studio studies. Okay, and Kira, uh, Kira Gregory. Kira Gregory from Richmond, Virginia, uh, graduated uh, from Princeton as well in 2019, same year as you. Also art, art history, history, gender studies. And joint degree. So you also have two dual. Okay, great, wonderful. So wonderful. Great, great, great. Okay, so I will leave, uh, you know, uh, to them to talk more about themselves and their work, uh, particularly the ones uh, that are in the show, okay? And then afterwards, we'll all make this like a round table and, uh, you know, uh, ask questions. How, how, how's that sound? Good? All right, so who would like to go first? Okay. I'll, I'll let's start off by thanking my son for putting together this beautiful show and bringing us all here today. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone who came out today and yesterday. It's, it's been really fun, and thank y'all. I don't know where y'all came from. I'm not Southern. Um, <laughs> you can say because I'm here. Yeah, I, I think I count. I'm Southern by proximity. Yeah. In close proximity. In proximity. In close proximity. Exactly. Look what we're doing. Wow. Okay. Um, and congratulations to Ray and Kira. Um, I'm really happy that we're all doing this together, and it's a really special experience. The first time series came out at a time of very early COVID. I fled New York City and was quarantining in my parents, my, my, my parents' house in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I was locked in my bedroom for two weeks, literally my bedroom, like they didn't let me out. Uh, they would like bring a tray of food and like leave it at the door and then like run away as if I was like, I don't know, but I didn't have it, it was fine. <laughs> um, but between binging Tiger King and refreshing the New York Times frantically, I was facing my, my friends for hours and hours every day. While well, seeing our loved ones' faces on the screens the size of a hamster is now a second nature. At the time, it was alarming and jarring, but very comfortable at the same time. I started to think about these digital versions of my friends and how their candid calls that went on for hours differed from our curated versions of themselves that our acquaintances saw online. I wanted to bring the real, imperfect, oily and complicated human versions of my friends that I saw online into the physical world. I started painting them apart to distract myself from the pandemic and apart to feel less alone. Soon friends and friends and strangers found, my way to the, to, found their way to my canvas. It became a refuge. While everyone was going through similar emotions and scenarios, each conversation was unique. I'm also interested in seeing if the people I hadn't met in person's portraits would be visually different from those of my friends. I'll let you try to guess and decide. Looking back on the series nearly, nearly two years later, I see these paintings as a snapshot in time. Our collective worry and anxiety, mine included, are cemented into the portraits. At its core, the FaceTime series is about connection in, in the early days of the pandemic. This series has become a building block for the work I'm creating now, excavating and deconstructing the digital performance of self and questioning what it means to inhabit a body in a physical world. Thank you. No, not to care. Great. I really like that last thing you said about um, what it means to have a body in a physical world or a digital, maybe a, a physical body in a digital world or a digital body in a physical world, whichever one that is. I feel like that's something I think about a lot. It's all the same um, nowadays almost. Yeah, exactly. I feel like it sort of merges. Um, and I think that's a reason why I think our work is, okay, I guess I'll get into that in a second. I'll talk a little bit about my work first. Um, <laughs> Um, again, I'm Kira. Hi, everyone who just came. Um, I 
I guess I'm, I'm primarily a printmaker, actually, is how I see myself, but I've been doing a lot of painting recently, and um, I really like to combine the two, um, because I feel like printmaking is such a, a shape-based, shape and line-based driven art, and then painting is very much more about color and movement, and so it's really fun for me to put them together. Um, and a lot of my work is about my, um, I guess I see it as very intimate snapshots of my daily life and my relationships with people. To me, all of my paintings feel very personal. Um, they're snapshots of my apartment, my friends, my like close, the people who are close to me um, and who I was with during the pandemic for the most part. Um, and I think the close proximity for my works comes from being physically sort of in the same apartment, stuck together, no one can really move or leave, I mean. <laughs> um, and I guess I was sort of thinking about what it means to um, be close to people and the moments that you see when you're with them that are different from what someone might see observing or um, even just how my life with my close friends and my like chosen family differs from maybe how I would be with my family in Virginia, um, how I would be when I was alone during the pandemic, um, and sort of the different ways our bodies and minds and identities manifest um, based on who we're around, what spaces we're in, even just like the things on the walls, the colors we're surrounded by, um, and what is like swirling around in your mind. Um, I have been thinking a lot this past year about spirituality as well, um, and how spirituality, community, and um, family, blood or otherwise, all come together. Um, this, this big piece actually, the ideas originally started after I had a conversation with my mom when I was home for a few weeks in the beginning of the pandemic when she was asking me about what my relationship to Catholicism is now because um, I was raised very Catholic and my mom um, was asking me a question about how I find spirituality in my life because that's something that is very important to her and while I'm personally no longer a practicing Catholic, um, the idea of spirituality being something so important to my family and my mother, it seemed like she was so um, worried that I might not have that. Um, and as someone who is queer, the, the Catholic Church and Catholicism is not necessarily a very, um, a place where I find like meaning and community. But, <laughs> but um, I started thinking about how do I find spirituality, how do I find community, how do I find hope, because that's something also that's really important to think about during this past year that has been so hard in so many ways and has felt so hopeless in so many ways. And um, I found that my, my spirituality in a way and my um, hope and sense of community really comes from honestly like queerness and um, how I am connected to my own body, how I have rethought my relationship to the world in terms of like, um, who, who do you ask for, for help? Who do you look to for hope? Who do you look to for um, guidance? And who do you look to for a sense of, um, like, it's, all, it's gonna be okay, we're in this together? Because I think that's what a lot of spirituality is about, and that's what a lot of, at least for my family, that's how my mom seems to feel about um, going to mass and, and being in a, a space like that. And, um, in the past year, I found a lot of that energy um, just like sitting on the couch with my loved ones and my friends and um, and finding that energy, like even going to protests, being in community with other people, being like at the club with other queer folks and honestly feeling um, 
somehow the the pandemic sort of like forces you to find hope in things that you might not otherwise so the the like saint cards that are in the background i'm not sure if everyone knows much about that but i have three prints in these paintings um there's three saints, St. Jude, St. Anthony of Padua, and um, St. Dymphna. Um, St. Dymphna is the patron saint of mental illness and anxiety. So in Catholicism, you like pray to certain saints to help you for certain issues. So um, they all have like these very dark stories behind them. Um, St. Anthony of Padua is the patron saint of lost things who um, a friend of mine has often joked about praying to for her lost mind, and I think about that a lot. And um, like, who do you go to when you're you feel like you're losing your mind? Um, you can pray to something, or you can be with someone. Um, and then Saint Jude is the patron saint of hopeless cases. So th I think I think a lot of these paintings feel like that spirituality comes through in the sense of like these there's this dark this darkness behind um this like intensity behind why you're seeking community why you're seeking um something to hold on to um but what might come out looks very mundane it's like okay we're all gonna sit around together but this can feel like something um beneath the surface it's something so much more important than just sitting at a table together. It's something that's like almost life-saving. It's something that is like, um, puts meaning in life personally. And even if it's just like, I don't know, sitting at a table or brushing your teeth in the bathroom together. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was kind of a long ramble, but... <laughs> um, yeah, going back to, I guess, what I was saying before about our works in conversation together, um, I, I think that type of proximity, like the physical versus the digital um, versus the spiritual proximity, the emotional proximity, um, and how those all are different depending on like who you are and who you're with. I, I mean, that seems so obvious, but like... Um, yeah, I think that's really an interesting way that our works talk to each other, too. Yeah, yeah I, I, I totally agree. Also, that was a great talk. I, I loved it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think like, at, at its core, like, I think the deeper meaning between like, me, you, and Ray, we're all mm -hmm. thinking about how we, like, how to connect. It yeah. was kind of a very challenging time. It was like how people want to spend their time, how you reach out to others, how you how we dealt with connecting, mm -hmm. which at, at its core, I mean, we all have different ways. I mean, Ray, Ray like, Ray's very, very playful and very nostalgic. And went, went back to this like other time. Like mm -hmm. you like zoned in on your surroundings and questioned like, previous beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like zeroing on, on online and digital and digital performance and what it means to like, be a person who's also online because it's two different things. Like what happens to your body when, when you are a person online? It's, yeah. Also like what happens to your body when the only place you go is your apartment? You know, <laughs> like what happens to your body when no one else is seeing it? Um, and or if the only people who are seeing it are people are like three different people who you live with and who I think there's something about like the dig the digital body and the physical body and just what happens to your body how does it distort how does it like fall into itself um, how does it like get lost in a way and sometimes that can be good and bad um, I think that's something even with the digital stuff that I found solace in in quarantine is that when you're on FaceTime you don't have to have a body and that's yeah. kind of nice <laughs> sometimes um, yeah and when you're around people you know well you don't really have to have a body either maybe that's a me thing I don't really <laughs> sometimes I don't want to have a body you know you just kind of want to be a floating orb of light or something um, <laughs> and light or darkness or I don't know but I think 
that has actually been something coming back out of quarantine that um, it's like then you have a body again. Yeah. You're seeing people in person again. This is actually the first time we, we were in the same program. We graduated together. It's the first time we've seen each other in like yeah. two years. Yeah. But we've been FaceTiming. So we were talking about this yesterday. It doesn't feel like we haven't seen each other. Um, I, I, I forgot how tall you were. I thought I was taller. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> But, but part of what like, drew me to FaceTime in the, in the first place was just that it, it felt like the most authentic version of connecting online. Like Instagram felt very curated, it felt very sequenced and photoshopped, and Facebook is for grandmoms. Oh, sorry, we're on Facebook, sorry. Um, <laughs> and, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so, like, but face, FaceTime is like, you saw people like when they're in their bed, they have their zit cream on, their face masks, they're like pre prepared. It was like having a conversation in person. It was the closest we got to in person through the digital. Um, kind of like breaking down that barrier of real versus fake online. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we should open up to the floor if anybody wants to, you know, kind of add to the conversation, you know, feel free to do that. Yes, please, who, who yeah. raise, raise your hand. If there's I'll anything we missed that someone's confused about, um, I don't know. I feel like I could have skipped over something important. So if anyone has any questions, just general ones, that's also good. Yeah, I, my, I, my personal uh, opinion about the whole digital and digital. The digital and physical, uh, to me, you know, I, my observation anyway about how we are now kind of like don't really know what is real anymore, right? You know how, <laughs> like, um, um, a lot of like incidents that where people are on Zoom and they don't realize they were being like they they would go to the bathroom and not realize the camera is on, you know those those like you kind of like your whole personal life kind of creeps into the the digital realm and that stays on forever, you know like what you did on camera stays, yeah, you know endlessly. So yeah, it's uh, all those we don't somehow we we why do we let go of that though? Why do we like then be so loose and not have this inhibition? You know, that's for me. That's a question I I don't have an answer to. But yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, also, you know how yesterday we talked about um, when you told them that you're going to paint them and you're going to screenshot them, they started posing. Yeah. So isn't that yeah? Do you want to? Yeah, elaborate. Was just, and like the first couple of portraits I did, I would I would talk to people for a couple hours, and then at the end, I'd be like, oh, I'm taking taking the photo now, taking the screenshot, and they they'd go, <laughs> you know, the way people do, like you're posing for a photograph. Um, and I realized that these made boring paintings. So I started um, screenshotting throughout the talks instead of letting people know. Um, again, they, they knew it was happening beforehand, so it was very consensual. But um, at the end, I would, just, I would have like 80 screenshots on my phone. I'd scroll through and pick the most interesting and pick the most authentic, the most real. And, like, and the, they weren't curating, they weren't posing. It was yeah. their emotions and what they were feeling and what they were saying. And, the portraits were created after our conversations and after those connections, and they're made in my childhood bedroom because that's where I was. And yeah, it's very personal. emotional. Very, very. Personal, right? yeah. yeah. And then we're just going to like, keep doing what we're doing. Um, so, like, yeah, I think that's also contributes to like um, your preference for like, making domestic scenes and stuff because, I don't know, like, I, I'm just used to like not having to like stage a scenario or like look at their painting or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, who are they? Who are you? Um, I'm in the middle. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle. I, 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 I knew that. that. Oh. <laughs>
when you really know someone, you really um, get the subtleties of like how they are. And, and when you can capture someone, you like capture like their spirit, like the way they sit, the way they move their body, the way that they they gesture, like the way they are when they are really truly relaxed, and they don't feel like anyone's watching them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah, have question. Well, I think we have, we have to be equitable here. So, Anna, talk about the picture on the left there with the binoculars. Okay. Yeah. So another I'm circumstance. Sure it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's unnerving, isn't it? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Also, the idea of like, performing online, performing online, online dating apps, it feels, it feels so weird as well. It's, like, it's a weird, weird thought process, so I kind of want to like, capture that and kind of like, pick through it, but in this way that like, they remain anonymous, but we still know things about them about their face. From, like, we know that they like watching, we know that they like ears, like, <laughs> we know that they have a lot Yeah. And not a Talk to know about a person without a face. Did you crop the face out? I did. Face out. <laughs> yeah. I would well because I was curious if the picture originally had no face because I wanted it weird. It had a face out. Yeah. I cropped it. Um, I cropped it purposefully. I didn't want to add the face, but I wanted like, this is this guy. Yeah, that makes sense. You also think about like clothing as well as part of the marker identity. Mm -hmm. So then you buy fabrics as well too. Um, not 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 in this show too much, but we're playing around with fabric and clothing as a way of like showing how we present ourselves. It's like what we'll choose to wear or not to wear. So that's something like that. That's right. Did you swipe left? If it was handy. I don't remember, honestly. Why is it a sentiment? He's here. No. Can you imagine? We want to do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think uh, we are all. Uh... <laughs> Follow the camera. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. See, this is uh, what we were talking about. How you know, I'm not kind of self-conscious because the camera is following me. Right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, my head, okay. Oh, hey. It's not a part of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm really not because I'm not from the generation where you know, like uh, social media. Thousand, <laughs> you know that you you are it's so uh, yeah yeah you're also <laughs> used to yeah uh, presenting as digital so and um so I think um, um we have, we apologize uh, that Ray isn't here um, I'm sure Ray would have a, a lot to say about his works as well um but what what I gather is his work is uh, very uh harks back to his childhood you know imagine you know situation that. Could be, or you know, the nostalgic, you know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ray's very, very, work is very, very playful and comfortable, and he really like brings us back to a time of comfort and childhood, but yeah. in this kind of uncomfortable way, which is it brings in the right. work. Right. Yeah. Um, like for example, the um, the, the uh, birthday cake with the uh, Power Rangers, and even you know, um, I think uh, the, the the table scene as well. You know, there's something kind of Kind of weird about it, something, but it's uh, this in, in this array, uh, unruly about it, you know, even though it's supposed to be, um, yeah, domestic scene, right? Yeah, uh, and the, the New York Times says, stop, 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 I think, you know, um, thank you um, for being here uh, and also participating in this uh, fun, lively conversation. I thank you both of you for making the trip. It's so special for us, you know, to just meet you in person. Thank you so much for having us. It's been an absolute delight. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so um, thank you. And uh, till next time, uh, yeah, and uh, farewell. Stay safe, everyone.